So let's move on now and talk about what happens next for Team Liquid. As you can see, they fail to make it out of groups. Another 3-3 three and three record. Another plane ride home after the group stage. And now we look at Team Liquid as we start to, as Team Liquid fans at least, start to think about free agency and what can happen with this team. And you have to start with the contracts and which players are expiring. And we have that for you, actually. Many of the players are on expiring contracts at the end of this season, which is now the end of TL mm. season, including the top half of the map. Impact, Broxa, and Jensen are all mm. expiring contracts as of November 17th. Uh, free agency now tactical is up on uh, until 2021 core jj signed until 2022 of course anything can happen there could be trades mm -hmm. whatever but when you look at this tyler when you look at the expiring contracts do you feel like this is from an economic standpoint and a contractual standpoint maybe this is an optimal situation because if a lot of people were to move pieces on tl i don't think mm -hmm. the bot lane would be the first place they look no, uh, bot lane, unless you're a buffoon, stays the same. You don't touch Tactical and Core JJ. Uh, just from how potent they look after just half a year together as a full-time bottom lane, uh, to look to go against guys like Perks and Huangfeng and, and, and Sordar and, and Mickey X and look like you belong, a Tactical is, uh, is a player that you want to build around, especially with Core JJ. You don't touch those two. Uh, that's the future of the team right there. Uh, hopefully, if there's a more AD carry focused uh, meta in the future, you could see more of those two kind of being the the centerpieces. Right now, it's a jungle meta, but those two don't touch them. They're too far. They're far too good. As I said, we're lucky to have Core JJ in North America, and we're lucky to have a prospect like Tactical, who played. He made mistakes. He he had a few m mishaps, but. Uh, he played far too forward sometimes. He got killed when he probably shouldn't have, and he, he got caught out. But I'd rather take a someone like that who would go for the plays, go for the flash plays, uh, play for the kill over playing too, too far too safe and just kind of getting rolled over and just losing in the lane and losing in the entire map. So those two, don't touch them. Jensen, I really don't see a better option. I don't think you move Jensen. I don't think if you're going to move any of these three players – uh, I'm, I'm sure Jensen's going to have a lot of offers. That's That might be the only reason why he would move is because there's more teams that want Jensen. But he has a track record of always showing up at Worlds and MSI. MSI finalist, World semifinalists. Uh, hard worker, someone who wants to win. He is someone who, to, at this tournament, uh, didn't look out of place against anyone. Uh, he had games where he stumped. He had a game where he stumped camp caps. Uh, he he's an excellent player. He is one of the best LCS players of all time. So if if Jensen wants to stay and you can find the right contract length in, in salary, uh, you go for it. I think if you're looking at if I, I actually think overall Team Liquid, if I was the GM, I would more than likely to stay with these five and just roll it back for one more year. Uh, I think this team with the Again, these guys have only been playing together as this starting five for half a year, and look how how far they went. They went, went they did as, as well as any other team liquid team in the past with a new coach, with uh, you know new bottom lane. You know, Broxa finally assimilating in North America. Uh, if you're going to change something, though, I would say either it's Brox or Impact. I don't know, but I don't know how you upgrade, right? Uh, you know. If Steve wants to pay, you know, two million, three million dollars to go get Naguri from Damon, and he wants to go just go, hey, let's let's do this, then sure. If you want to get like, but I don't think you import anyone unless it's a S tier, you know, top of their game, mm -hmm. top ten player at their role kind of guy. Alfari maybe, but I think like the visa issues and the pandemic makes it so difficult to make moves right now. So. I, I think right now for me as a GM, I would say go in with these five. I, I like all five players. Uh, Brox's champion pool is always going to be talked about and, and bounded about, but they proved a lot today, and I think they proved a lot, and I and I think we haven't seen all of it yet. Like I think this leaves us wanting more, right? Where in a world where they do get that tiebreaker, Arda, and they go in Sooning, and they lose to Sooning, I think it's a lot easier to make changes in the mind of a fan, in the mind of someone, an analyst, right? Where it's like, 
okay, they went three and three, they lost the tiebreaker, they could get it done when it counts. But because they didn't get that tiebreaker, there's always that what if of like this team had two dominating victories in a row. They slapped around Sooning in one game. They dunked on Machi, the biggest blow in the entire tournament in the neck, and then that's the end of their tournament. Three and three, they end on the high note. And it's like you were left wanting more. You want that encore performance. And I kind of want to see more of them. I want to see how far they can go as a team because I don't think we've seen the peak of this team yet. I, I do think that I, I do want more you, you know, youth uh, incorporated around the LCS. But for Team Liquid, for a team – that is already well set up with Core JJ as a cornerstone for the next, you know, two years. I don't think this is a team that necessarily has to go to the youth movement. And I don't think there's any uh, young prospects right now at the top lane or jungle that you can necessarily bring in, uh, especially from their academy system, that are better than Broxer or Impact. And I think both of those players are sturdy enough, especially Impact, where I don't think uh, any world tournament or any international tournament they're going to be uh, uh, kind of blown out by. Mm. Maybe they look to Oceania. Uh, I maybe, mean, there's, maybe, maybe yeah. we're talking uh, Team Liquid Tapoon or Team Liquid Babip, Team Liquid Tally. How does that sound? They 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 look at Legacy Esports and they say, hey, maybe we'll uh, we'll uh, make some deals and bring some players across since they're resident. They count as residents starting next yeah. season. It's. I, I, mean, I wonder. I actually wonder. I know this is this is off topic, but I wonder if Papa Smithy had inside information i wonder if he knew this was coming so he's like you know what i'm gonna load up on some of the australian players and then uh when they become residents i can go get other 200 iq move like he he is nostradamus he 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 is a winner out of that uh, australia announcement oh yeah i mean there's so many players <laughs> that got upgraded from that australian announcement like fbi fudge yep. everyone it but no, I, I don't think there's any easy move here for Team Liquid unless no. uh, Steve Moneybags opens up and says, I want Niguri. Uh, I'm going to make Niguri happen. I'm going to get the visa in place somehow to get Niguri. Uh, he's the only player that I see on the on the market of the like import market where I think that's like even a and that's an upgrade. That's a, that's an upgrade that changes Team Liquid's value significantly, right? Where you're bringing in a top ten maybe world player who's a free agent. And then you have, you know, Core JJ and Aguri as, as your cornerstone. But that's like fantasy booking, right? Sure. Um, more than likely. Which, which we don't shy away from on yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, we like fantasy booking, but I think the smart action is to look for some young talent in Academy, uh, have them play behind Broxa and Impact, and try to build for the next, you know, sign those, sign those guys to one more, like one year contract and try to, uh, have a Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers situation, right? Where you're breeding the next generation. Because I don't think there's anyone right now in their academy system that you can just prop into those spots. So I, th I think you need to like give a year for just like tactical and double lift, where you want a young, you know, understudy to learn from two really experienced players and learn from them. That's what I want to see from Team Liquid, where they get two young players, you know, teenage, 18, 19, 20 inexperienced players to learn from two, you know, legendary finalists who are, you know, know everything but the jungle and top lane role. It's, it's fascinating that we're talking like this about Team Liquid, right? Mm. Because you look at it from an entire year, they just came off four straight split victories. Mm. They bring in Broxa as what they believe to be an upgrade over Xmithy, right? Like many people were pointing to Xmithy as the reason why they didn't get out of groups at Worlds 2019, whether that is correct or not. Xmithy was labeled to be one of the problems, if not the major problem, by many people. And so Broxa comes in, visa issues, couldn't join the team on time. Spring split is a failure. It's a bust. They make changes again. Here comes tactical. And then coaching staff. That's one area I hope remains the same. I, I believe Jat deserves a full year in 2021 to right to this ship for Team Liquid. It was a very impressive summer split considering what happened in spring. And for all intents and purposes, Jat was one coin essentially turning the other way away from making it out of groups. So I do hope that the coaching staff remains the same. And so it's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about this in the offseason season. And a lot of the points that you just made, Tyler, are going to be brought up again and again 
But it's just, it, it, in Broxa in particular, like, remember how we were talking about him eight months ago, right? On the free agency show. And now look at the way we're, we're speaking about Broxa and saying, well, maybe he's a liability. It's like the jungle position is cursed with TL, it seems, at Worlds. Yeah, uh, yeah I think it was more so. We're, we're, again, it's another instance of a North American team importing a player on their downturn, right? Uh, we don't often bring over players still at their peak level, peak uh, rate, their peak condition, where... Again, that's why I say if you're going to go import, go import for Chovy, go import for Nagari. That's why I, I, I've said so many times. I respect what Evil Genius did last year, where they said we're just going to go for Chovy. We're gonna, we're going to offer him a multi million dollar deal, and we want to get the best, one of the best players in the world at their peak condition, at you know 18 years of age, and we want to build around him for the next five to ten years. And I respected that, where it's a thing of you're trying to get an import player at their peak value, where for North America it's been so often where we. We try to we try to take players who are on the downswing and try to make them prop them up as they're still you know gods of the game like they were a year or two prior. So I like Broxa. I think Broxa is a really smart player. I, I think he he had a decent tournament. But I think the last thing that I want to say on this topic is I wonder what Jensen does because obviously I think people would want Jensen back. But we saw Jensen leave Cloud Nine after the 2018 uh, World Championship. Because he felt like that was the peak that his team could reach. He thought that the World Semifinals was as far as he could go with that team. He went to Team Liquid because he thought he could go farther. He thought he could go a bit higher. He made the MSI Finals with Team Liquid. Now at this at this time, his contract is up. I think he's at a crossroads where I think he has to survey the lane. I think he will go and sign up the team he feels he has the best chance to win a World Championship with. Mm. And regardless honestly, of region, I would believe he would want to stay in North America. I would believe if he could find a way, a team that could, you know, give him hope that he could, you know, be the first North American world champion. I, I think he would want to stay in North America, but who knows? He, he is European. You know, we're in a global pandemic. If he wants to go home and play for an LES, LEC team, if he feels like that would give him the best chance to be a world champion, I wouldn't rule it out. Cause Jensen is a very, very dedicated and zeroed in player where his, ultimate life goal is to win the Summoner's Cup, and he will do anything possible to make that happen. So I think it's very interesting. Yeah. I think Team Liquid will want him back. I think it's up to Jensen to think, is this the place where I think I can go farther than I did last year and the year before? Because he's already made an MSI final in a World Semifinal. Domestic titles no, are, aren't uh, aren't very important anymore to him. He's done that. He, he's finally conquered that goal. Uh, I think he wants international glory, and if he doesn't feel like he can get that on Team Liquid, I'm sure he would be looking elsewhere because he's going to be a hot commodity on the free agent uh, free agent market in a few weeks. I can't wait to talk free agency as we go along and more teams are eliminated, but that's a conversation for another day.